you've seen the app that we want to start building now. And now I'm going to delve into the actual code that came as part of the template. So far, I haven't typed anything into the app. I'm just using the code in the template. And let's explore what's going on inside the app. We have the Project Navigator over here, and you will see that there are pairs of files, a header file and an implementation file, a header file and an implementation file, a header file and an implementation file. And that's the basic idea behind the class structure in Objective-C. The original goal of Objective-C was to build an object-oriented programming language based on the C programming language and to build it with the fewest possible changes to C. In other words, it's a very lightweight set of extensions to C that provide object-oriented features. This was a different approach from some other object-oriented programming languages at the time, particularly C++. And you'll see how the Objective-C language is different from those other languages. Right now, I'd like to say that just as when you learn a foreign language, the best way to learn it is what they call total immersion. If you know C++ or another object-oriented programming language, resist the temptation to translate from C++ into Objective-C because the structures are different, the goals of those two languages are different, and it doesn't matter which way you're translating, you will wind up in some complications that are unnecessary if you just try to function in the new language. So avoid the temptation to mentally translate from one to the other. And what you'll see as we have these pairs of files that implement each class in a project, you'll see two of the major features of Objective-C that happen to be different from languages like C++. So let's first take a look at a header file. By the way, the header files typically are much shorter than the implementation files. The header file describes what is going to be defined in the implementation file. It declares the properties and methods that are going to be implemented in the implementation file. So let's first take a look at what is happening in this header file. And some of these concepts I will be returning to throughout the course, and we'll be going into them in more and more depth as we move along. So now we're at a very high-level view of the declaration of a class. The name of the class is App Delegate. It is a subclass of something called UI Responder. So right away, you can see the beginning of the hierarchy of inheritance of classes and subclasses. If you're looking from the superclass, this is subclass. If you look from the subclass, this is the superclass. This is the same in most object-oriented programming languages. In typical object-oriented programming style, objects, properties, methods that are declared here in the superclass can be accessible to subclasses can be overridden in subclasses, can be extended in various ways. So this is the structure of reusing code through the class hierarchy. You're also seeing here something that we'll talk about later on, but I'll just point it out now. It's something called a UI application delegate in this case. This is a protocol to which this class is said to conform. Now, this class will override and or implement methods of its superclass. It will also implement methods declared in the delegate. Not all of them, some of them are optional, but you'll see that what this class deals with are its own unique methods, those that it inherits from its superclass, and those that it implements on behalf of a delegate. As you'll see when we talk about delegates and protocols, this is a way of dealing with the classic issue of multiple inheritance, which is always a difficult thing to implement. But right now, I just want to point out the fact that we have a traditional class, superclass, and subclass hierarchy implemented in Objective-C. 